Well, we've been here at the NRA convention in Houston for the last four days now, and it's been a great convention, maybe perhaps one of the largest conventions in the history of the National Rifle Association. Tomorrow morning starts the annual board meeting where all of the boards of directors come in from all over the country to uh, kind of set the policy and where the NRA is going. We're here today with Grover Norquist, a uh, huge tax man in terms of cutting taxes, cutting the government, and uh, also some immigration reform things that we'll talk about later. Welcome to Houston. Good to be with you. Good it, to be here. It's good to see you here in, in our great city. I know you were here just about a month ago, I guess it was, and yeah. got to meet you then, and I appreciate you taking the time to talk to Texas GOP Vote about, about these issues. Tell us about the board meeting, and, and where does the, is the RNR going? You've had a huge victory sure. now with the Senate. Where do we go from here? Sure. There are 76 members of the board of directors, so it looks like a small legislature and they seat us alphabetically. So I sit next to Ollie North, and if Ollie's not there, Ted Nugent. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a, it's a fascinating collection of people from all 50 states. Some are collectors, some are shooters, some are hunters, some are political people, uh, some are celebrities, Tom Selleck, mm -hmm. uh, and all play a very important role in highlighting the importance of the Second Amendment. Uh, unfortunately, the left once again tried to use the murders in uh, Connecticut for political purposes and claiming, oh, now we need to do that which they wanted to do five years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, and 20 years from now. So, it, you know, of course, the laws they wanted to pass would not have stopped the murderer in Connecticut. They acknowledge that, but they still feel we should do something. And the something they want to do is what they always wanted to do. Uh, if you're Obama, and you're out there exploiting these murders uh, for political purposes, you really have to step back. If you, if you believe for a second that these laws he wants to pass would reduce crime, which they wouldn't, he should have done something in 2009 and 2010 where he had super majorities of Democrats in the House and the Senate. But he not only didn't do it, he didn't try. Mm -hmm. So let's, he doesn't care. He's just using the issue for politics. He didn't care in 2009, he didn't care in 2010, he doesn't care now. Mm -hmm. um, and he also, in the back of his mind, knows that it has nothing to do with reducing crime and everything to do with increasing, increasing government control. Now, yesterday we had uh, a protest outside the, the NRA convention, uh, a whopping 25 people, I think, was the max that were out there at one point in time. I got in a conversation with, with some of the people down there, and they they expressed um, th the main thing they seemed to be upset about was the, the opposition to a universal background check. And uh, when we talked to them about the fact that the government doesn't enforce the law now on the existing background checks, and background checks probably cover 95% of all gun purchases in the United States anyway, and certainly upwards of that if you're looking at just dealer to consumer sales, whether it's internet based or direct to consumer sales. So why is the NRA opposed to that? And what, what is it that the NRA favors in terms of enforcement of existing law? Well, certainly the NRA, um, which has supported dealer uh, going through NIC, mm -hmm. um, instant check, uh, there are about 25 states that don't cooperate with that for people with, who've been adjudicated to be uh, mentally problematic. Mm -hmm. I don't mean some guy who went to a therapist 10 years ago. I mean some so court or a judge said you're crazy and you're dangerous to yourself or others. Mm -hmm. Those lists are supposed to be made available to the nationalists in check. 25 states, oddly enough mostly liberal Democrat states, mm -hmm. don't cooperate with that. And it wasn't in the original law because Ted Kennedy objected to it. So the shootings we've seen recently with crazy people involved, now they've generally gotten their guns other ways, mm -hmm. but um, there would be something to be said <clears throat> for liberal democratic states cooperating with the instant check before they run around going, how come we don't mandate everybody use a system mm -hmm. which is incomplete? Uh, and the problem that we have are the liberal democrat governors, state legislatures, courts, mm -hmm. um, not allowing them to cooperate and make that whole. So let's do those things. The, the other one is, look, we need to combat crime. Um, gun control is not the way to do it. 
and there's just something fundamentally wrong when a crime is committed, and they say, oh, let's go after the inanimate objects. Right. Uh, this is probably the only area in, in criminal law enforcement where people want to go after the object and not against the person committing the behavior. It just, you know, when, when you see deaths from DWIs, we don't go after alcohol, we don't go after cars. Right. We increase the punishments on people that break the law. And, you know, in so many cases with, with gun laws, there are existing laws that you can enhance the, the penalties for people that use a gun in commission of crime, and they just don't do that. Yeah, th th those laws are there. Mm -hmm. um, that's not the challenge that we have. Um, we've actually found the best way to reduce crime is to have more people with concealed carry permits. Mm -hmm. Today, there are 9.3 million Americans with concealed carry permits in the country, up a million, a million three from a year ago. Mm -hmm. So it's growing, uh, and people are taking control of protecting themselves and their families. They're carrying as well as owning. Mm -hmm. And that really is the backbone of the modern Second Amendment community. It's not just hunters. It's people who carry. Hunters, a couple weeks a year, go out and annoy Bambi's relatives. Mm -hmm. Fine. <laughs> Worth doing. Mm -hmm. That said, that person doesn't have a connection with the Second Amendment as strong as the person who carries. And that's where the movement is actually growing. The number of hunters has declined a little bit mm -hmm. uh, over the last couple of generations. But not deer hunters, that keeps going up. Right. But uh, bird hunters has been declining, uh, interestingly. Hmm. Uh, but the 9.3 million concealed carry growing every year, the states that pass concealed carry laws to make it so that you have to get a permit, not that they may give you the permit, but right. they shall give you the permit. Uh, when those laws pass and they've been in place for a couple of years and more people get concealed carry, you can see measurable drops in murders, rapes, assaults. Thousands of people are alive today because of the expanded concealed carry laws. Thousands of people were not raped because of that. You can just statistically see this. And it's compared to other states that didn't have those laws. So the best way to reduce crime is to have more honest gun owners carrying. And then when you see a city like Chicago that has the highest murder rate in, in the country, the police chief there, you know, Illinois has been mandated to come out with a concealed carry yeah. program by the courts. And the, the police chief in Chicago said that when that happens, that citizens with concealed carry permits will be shot by the police at, at some point in the future. Uh, this mentality that somehow the, the law-abiding citizen is the problem, is, it's just pervasive throughout that liberal mentality. Yeah. We need to avoid doing what the left does. And in the murders in Chicago that take place in a city with a complete ban on owning a pistol, in a state, the only state in the nation with, with no concealed carry, permit available, not shall issue, not may issue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they've got some completely phony one that if you jump through right. 25 hoops, you can... You know, Friends yeah. with the chief of police and right. stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but we need to figure out how to talk about the fact that people are getting killed and they're not solving that problem. They're trying to use murders in their own city mm -hmm. to get gun control, which they know from comparing Chicago to other cities that have concealed carry, that don't have the onerous gun control laws. You're safer in other cities. You are not safe in Chicago because honest people don't have concealed carry permits. Um, how many people are these people are these leftists willing to kill, kill mm -hmm. with policies that for decades we've known are counter? And that's pretty gruesome. That's pretty cold. Those guys are letting kids die knowingly. This is not a mistake. This is, this is not that, you know, it's not like they haven't read the books, mm -hmm. more guns, less crime. It's not that they don't know the statistics. They do know the statistics. Right. They don't care. They don't care. It makes you wonder if the crime rate in Chicago is cause or effect. I uh, interviewed a man this weekend that wrote a book called uh, Guns Across the Border. He was actually the undercover gun store owner that was selling guns to the Mexican cartels on behalf of the U.S. government uh, in Operation Linebacker before Fast and Furious. And he said it became very clear 
in that whole operation that their intent was to increase the number of gun-related deaths in Mexico, to kill Mexican <laughs> citizens in order to further the anti-gun agenda in the United States. The, the challenge is it's so gruesome, it's so awful, that to talk about what they've done is to sound like an hysteric. Mm -hmm. Because what they've done is so hysterically evil. Right. Um, but we see it with Fast and Furious. We see it every day in Chicago. People are being killed and the police aren't aren't being helpful and they're deliberately keeping guns out of the hands of honest people who could have stopped a lot of this crime. Well, Grover, thank you for taking the time to talk with us here. We, we enjoyed it and I know tomorrow's going to be a busy day with the board meeting, so yeah. we appreciate you talking to us tonight. Thanks a lot. Thank you.